And joining us now to share his side of the story is the founder of Gawker, Nick Denton. Nick, good morning to you. Hey, Dan. Let me ask you, I was sitting here with you watching those jurors and they had some pretty mm -hmm. tough things to say about you. That one juror said you have no heart, no soul, that it's all about the almighty dollar and it's sick. Just give me a sense of what goes through your head when you hear somebody say that. <clears throat> well, for a start, we never had any advertising running on this story. We didn't actually make any money out of it at all. And you know what it's like as a journalist. Uh, you know, if you actually were feeling every single thing that a subject was feeling when a story came out, you know, frankly, there would be no news. No stories would actually ever get written. Uh, and we do put the story first, and I am uh, unapologetic about that. Another of the jurors said, and I think I know your answer to this because I think you may have just answered it, but another of the jurors said she was looking for you to show some remorse. Do you feel any remorse about posting that sex tape now? Um, no, you know, I don't. Um, we didn't post the sex tape. We posted nine seconds of um, sexual activity in an excerpt of a much, much longer tape. It was in the context of a story. The story has been found newsworthy by a federal judge, by the appeals court on repeated occasions. Um, and, you know, I, I believe it was newsworthy. Those judges agreed that it was newsworthy. Uh, and so it is a story that we would do again. When we spoke to those jurors, one of the things they told us was that a key moment for them was hearing your now former editor say that he would post a sex tape of a child as long as that child was north of four years old. Now, you've later said that he was joking, but I, w I have to imagine that's a, a damaging moment. Oh, it was absolutely a damaging moment. It, it, was, a, it was a flip remark, which he'd made at the end of the day. You know, he was being harried by Hogan's lawyers. Um, the same question was, uh, was being asked repeatedly. And, you know, he, he, they got to him, and we paid a price. One of your main arguments has been that the jury was not allowed to hear from a key witness. Um, uh, who would have said, you say, that, that Hogan knew he was being recorded during that sexual encounter. However, we, it's interesting, we asked the jury about this, and they said even if they had heard that at trial, it wouldn't have made a difference to them. Well, I mean, I, I don't know how they could know that. Um, Bubba Clem, who's the man at the very heart of this, the radio shock jock who shared his wife, encouraged his wife to sleep with Hulk Hogan and then taped the encounters. Um, his, his testimony was actually vital, was vital to our case. I think it was vital to any understanding of what was going on. Um, you know, he was the one who actually received the text message from Hulk Hogan, you know, a document that was actually unsealed by the appeals court you know, on the final day of trial. Um, which actually shows that Hulk, uh, Hulk Hogan's motives in this case were entirely different from the ones that he actually was talking about. It's, it's worth noting that, that he has made, Clem has made varying statements on, on this issue of whether this Hogan a, knew. This was an interview to the FBI. You know, when lies are punishable. Uh, it's a crime to lie to the FBI. He, he said that Hogan knew that there were cameras in the house. He knew he was being taped. They were best friends. They knew everything about each other's life. So I, don't, I just don't think it's credible for Hulk Hogan to pretend that he actually had no idea of what was going on. Hogan gave an interview after the trial. He said there was a moment in the trial where the two of you were having a stare down and that you, quote, scared the hell out of him. Uh, did you, do you aware of this and do you have any response to it? I, I was aware that our eyes met for a considerable amount of time. He's looked at this whole thing you know, through a wrestling metaphor. You know, it's, it's, a, it's some kind of wrestling match. It's a smackdown, leg drops. No, it's, it's actually a, it's a serious case. You know, it's a serious case which um, I think in many people's eyes, you know, just trying to draw the line between privacy and the free press. I actually think it's more about you know, publicity versus the free press. Uh, that Hulk Hogan was talking about his sex life incessantly on TMZ, on the Howard Stern show. He was joking about this tape. Uh, he didn't like the story that we wrote. You know, that's his right. It's the right of the jury not to like the story that we wrote. Um, but it's a free press, and in this country, uh, people are, are allowed to write what they want, and people are allowed to read what they want. Nick Denton, thank you very much. This thank is you. not over. That's very clear.